living in this world without leadership. You either have the creator as your leader, or you have the forces of this world as your leader. If I do not have the leader, then the forces of this world will be my leader without me knowing it. I'd just like to, uh, I'd like to welcome everybody here to this Imam Habitza Larkin Center. I'll tell you, this is, this is a really important topic. This is our second annual event that's being of this type that's going on. And I want to thank the Education Advisory Committee for, for starting this whole thing. Um, yeah, yeah, really. It's, they took on this project and uh, they really made it happen. And it's, it's grown since the second year and, and it is such a critically important topic. It's, it's about our kids, it's about our future. It's about making sure that we're recognizing what's going on in our kids' lives. It's awesome to see that everybody's come out for such an important cause and that you guys are willing to learn about this. Unfortunately, most people, most parents, aren't living in reality. Everybody, most parents are saying that my kid would never do that. My kid could never end up using drugs. My kid could never end up dying of an overdose. My kid doesn't vape. My kid doesn't bully. And, and that's just not the case. That's not the truth. Is that if it happens to anybody. And what I'm finding is that, yes, they're aware of vaping, and they're aware of all of these issues, but they don't know what it actually is. They're not educated. They're just told not to do it. So if this is such an important event, then we can all learn as a group here of how to educate our kids, and what's the best way to speak to them, and to learn some more information about each one of these issues so that we can best relate that to these kids, so they can fully understand what they're getting themselves into. Because no matter what we do, it's going to pop up. There's going to be a vein put in the face. There's going to be a, a, a joint. It, it, all of this is going to be put in the face. It's going to happen. We can't avoid that. But we can at least educate them enough so they can make their own, own decision about what they want to do. Young people have way too much immediacy in their lives, both with the technology that we all can't live without, and the immediacy of news that we know when something happens so quickly and the terror that that creates and the the uh, stress level that it creates which creates a constant flow of adrenaline makes us uh, susceptible to many illnesses both at the time and further on in our lives if i didn't want to speak to anybody i didn't listen to my answer machine it wasn't like you know, I could see that the guy I just broke up with is now with a new girl, and I know where his phone is, and it's going over here. It's it's much more intrusive, and, and I think uh, a lot of students really get hooked up in the likes. They want to wrap it up. They want to see if they can get two, three thousand likes. Otherwise, they get sad and depressed. What this means to me, as a mom and as a school board member and a teacher, I really want to make sure our at-risk population, which is basically all our kids. Have a place to ask questions, go and talk to an adult, and if you're not getting the answers that you need, keep asking all the way up from, from your administrators, your teacher, um, and then you can call your school board member and, and we'll be able to afford uh, you the opportunity for help. Our guidance office, like, we think that all they all they do is make our schedules and things like that, but I can tell you firsthand, I've gone into my guidance counselor's office and bawled my eyes out. So like they're there for us. They're not just here to, you know, do the school related things, they're here to help us. And then we have like a family counselor here. Like we have people here that are like placed here to help us. We just have to go out and find it too. The other thing we do, which I'm very proud of, is we facilitate and support the Hope Sunshine Clubs in Broward County Schools, which are a positive social and emotional learning environment designed to create leadership and engagement for young people so that they have a place to go to share their concerns, to develop their skill sets, and uh, to have a calming, peaceful way to share with one another and build skills. Although we do bring awareness to these certain topics like suicide and drug abuse and teen dating violence, like we want them people and other students to know that we are a safe place. Like you guys can come and talk to us and we can like help you get a different perspective, understand your situation. It's not like you're not alone type thing. FISP, the Florida Initiative for Suicide Prevention, has been uh, a mainstay in our community for over 30 years, providing supports to survivors of suicide. That's one of our primary functions. So we facilitate support groups when someone has lost a loved one and needs the support over time. We also provide trainings across our community on the issues of death by suicide, both advocacy for programs and, and the creation of services and tools for the entire community, not just in response to a death by suicide, but across the arc of prevention, 
intervention and postvention. So you provide prevention resources in the community, intervention when there are occurrences happening, and postvention to serve the needs of the community after a, a serious incident or a tragedy, both in a microcosm way for a family or a macrocosm way for members of the community, such as Marjorie Stoneman Douglas tragedy. I would say the second thing I would do is definitely be participating in this community-wide conversation about breaking down the stigmas. Uh, how I grew up, it was just tough it out, uh, he'll get over it. And all of those things that you know were said, and now we're realizing that you know instead of saying he will get over it, we need to have that conversation. Um, from a communication perspective, we just have to slow down. And we have to encourage everyone in our community to slow down have that conversation. It's painful. I know my wife and I, we had kids that were all over the place, but we had to take some time out to be intentional because if we're not talking to them, somebody else is. And I have a 16-year-old son who, uh, the year 2019, has known a friend who committed suicide and a family member who got uh, murdered by, by guns. And um, all of what we're talking about is, is involved with that because when it comes to suicide, he said he would always talk to the boy and the boy would always, you know, adhere to him. But when the boy moved away and uh, there was nobody to talk to, that's when it happened. Now, when it comes to gun violence and um, mental health, the person who, who killed the family member has schizophrenia untreated. And again, the last taboo, nobody in the family knows how to deal with this stuff. And it's almost as if, you could talk about somebody using drugs, but you certainly don't want to talk about somebody who has mental health in your family because of the taboos. And so we have to, it's not even a stigmatization, it's a taboo. That's the one thing you don't talk about. You need to be able to talk about suicide and it not being such um, a, a taboo. Sometimes it's the simple act of asking questions and the importance is that mental health is about being healthy and challenges to our mental health are illness and we have to respect the fact just like we treat any illness that interruptions in our mental health can be treated and need to be respected and need not to be stigmatized. But if you accept what I'm saying, you would never say somebody committed cancer. You wouldn't say somebody committed a heart attack or somebody committed diabetes. You respect those as illnesses and you treat the people that way. It's very hard when a person is beginning to suffer depression to get help. What happens is as we are starting to suffer, we think we can handle it. And I characterize that as if you had a rock garden in front of your house and every day you put a rock in your pocket. And over time, the first rock, the second rock, the third, didn't mean much to your life. That's fairly normal stress level. But over time, those rocks begin to weigh you down. And that's a point at which where you could reach out for help, but you may not know how to reach out for help. You may still feel you can handle it. You may be embarrassed. You may be stigmatized. But then you put that next rock in your pocket. And then it's too late, because when a person is suffering from chronic depression, they feel helpless and hopeless. They feel devalued. They don't know how to reach out for help, and they don't feel they deserve the help very often. So I think people watching this or thinking about this is don't wait. If you feel you're off, if you think your family members are off or your friends are off, seek them out engage them, suggest they get help. The great news is that these kinds of illnesses are treatable.